How's it going, fam? Welcome back to Erica ZDC. And today we have something very exciting to show. I never thought I would handle one of these. And we are just going to take our time, really look at this and talk about this because you are not going to believe what is inside this Michael Richter slip. But before we get started, I wanna give a huge thanks to Michael Richter. He makes the world's best leather slips. You can hit him up on his Instagram direct messages to get on his books for an order. He also has a YouTube channel, which I will link down in the description below, but we wanna fill up his books and make him able to do this full time by the end of the year. And we're gonna be the people to get him there. So please fill up his books. He makes absolutely incredible leather slips for our knives. I also wanna give a huge shout out to my friend, Jesse, who sent this knife in this knife from Mike Morin Knives. Jesse is one of the biggest supporters of the channel and for my birthday, he got me one of these. So Jesse, thank you so much. You will never understand how much I cherish your soul. You are incredible. So in the slip down there, we have a regular straight jack knife from Mike Morin Knives. These are handmade traditional knives. Uh, they are hand finished. They are freehand sharpened, and this is what's inside. We have a spear point blade, CPM 154, HRC of 60.5, and it was made pretty recently. All right, let's check this bad boy out. I could not believe when this arrived. I will say I already used it, so if there's anything on the blade, guys, that's from me. But look at this. This doesn't even look like it was made by a human. It actually looks like it was made by like God's angels. I'm not sure how a human can do this. This is the most perfect, beautiful, immaculate, flawless piece of work I've ever seen in my entire life. Mike's books are not open as far as I know. These knives are extremely hard to get. I have no idea how Jesse does this stuff, but he was able to get me one of these. Um, this is, in my opinion, the perfect EDC knife for me if we are speaking in the field of traditional pocket knives. So this has everything going for it that I am obsessed with. Let's start from the top and work our way down. So we have a hand finished, free hand sharpened CPM 154 blade, not to be conf confused with 154 CM. Those are very different. This is an American powdered steel. It is stainless. And it's honestly really good from my use. Nice and thin, full flat ground with a really tiny bevel, but it is a razor blade. And then we have a polished swedge, which is a really nice touch. And it's a soft swedge. Excuse the nail polish on my fingers, I'm sorry. But this blade shape is one of my favorites if we're talking about traditional knives. I love spear point blades. And this is very reminiscent of the spear point blade that we find on the GEC cattle knife, the number 35. However, that knife has three blades. And if you're looking for something like the cattle knife with this very minimalistic design, but with one blade, here it is. So just an absolutely beautiful blade. We we have a really nice sharpening choil, very thin, absolutely perfectly centered. Of course, no movement side to side, up and down, nothing. And from what I know, 64 CPM 154, not bad. Again, especially for a traditional knife, that is not something that you're going to typically find. I really like how this whole thing was set up because typically once you get into traditional style knives that are modern, you're looking at like an Ohio River Jack made in China with M390 blade steel 
that's not my jam. No offense to anybody, but that's not my jam. American made, I will take it. And this is a beautiful example of an American made, handmade, modern traditional folder with premium materials and premium fit and finish. There's our little blade stamp there, Mike Morin. I really like how clean this is. It's not loaded down with serial numbers, what kind of steel it is, nothing like that. It's literally just the maker's mark and that's it. I really like that presentation. It's very crisp and clean. And I feel like it also makes all of these lines pop on this knife. We have fluted bolsters that are absolutely perfectly done. And the transition from the bolsters to the black canvas micarta covers, to the pins, to the shield, to the liners, everything is flawless. And if you were blindfolded, you would not be able to feel where anything transitions. There, it, it, it's, there's nothing. I mean, I cannot feel a thing on this knife. Ooh, that just got stuck in my finger right there. This thing is sharp, guys. This thing is crazy sharp. It is sharpened freehand at 20 degrees per side. Just gorgeous. I really like how there's nothing happening down here. We just have a very straight, well, it's called a straight jack, uh, a very straight handle. It fills the hand very nicely. This is, in my opinion, the perfect size for me. And the little bit of flare at the end is a really nice touch. No gaps, of course. It does, it looks like, if you were to look at it a couple inches away from your face, it looks like just a piece of metal, honestly. You would not be able to tell that that is um, liners and a back spring. I mean, this is absolutely perfect. I really enjoy the thickness of these micarta covers as well. They're not too thin, and they also do round out a little bit. So it fills the hand perfectly. This is a really good slicer. I've already used it. Like I said, I tried to clean the blade off a little bit before we filmed this video. But I did use this, and it is a razor blade, and it is... It moves through material really nicely with that blade stock. Those are the pins, absolutely gorgeous. And I really like this style of nail neck. I think that if this had a long pull, it would look a little strange. So that is really nice in my opinion. And of course, it has a beautiful matching Richter knives slip. I already had this in my possession before the knife arrived. And it's quite funny. I did not know that this was coming to me uh, until the very last minute. Jesse ended up snagging this from Three Finger Mac or something like that. He's a custom knife distributor. And I already had this slip in my collection, this black wood grain slip from Michael Richter. And then he sent me a, a picture and a video of this knife, and I was like, wow, that's going to go perfectly in that slip. And here it is. I mean, does that not look good? It's literally identical. That white thread matches these beautiful silver bolsters and silver blade and the pins. Everything just looks so good together. But, um, yeah, this was one of my birthday presents. My birthday is on the 27th, and Jesse wanted to send it out early because he was so excited. Uh -huh. Let's look at the walk and talk real quick. That is like mind blowing. That is snappy. Strike three right down the center as Michael Richter would say. That is insanely snappy guys. That walk and talk is wild. It's not overwhelming though. It's, it's literally perfect. Like 10 out of 10. This is beautiful. Just the acoustics on this alone are wild. So like I said, these are handmade and his books are not open. He does these by hand. They run for 
uh, around $750 as far as I know at a baseline. Is it worth it? Um, that's 100% up to you. Some people would never spend that type of money on a knife. For me, if you are passionate about the hobby and you have that money, then yes, it is 100% worth it. If you are looking to experience um, a realm of perfection that you will never find anywhere else, I would highly suggest Michael Moore and Knives. This is so beyond anything that I thought was possible, to be honest. I didn't actually think that this level of absolute attention to detail was even possible for a human to do. So I think it's worth the money. I mean, this is literally the most beautiful, perfect thing I've ever held in my life. And of course I'm going to use it. I, I almost think it would be a disservice to this knife, um, a, a disrespect, if you will, to Mike to have one of his pieces that he put so much time and effort into just to let it sit in a case and to stare at it a few times a year when I want to make a video on it and brag about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is going to be used. This is going to be in pocket. I am absolutely going to get my money's worth out of this. I, and I know I didn't buy it. I guess I should say Jesse's money's Jesse's money. Um, I, I want, I want to be respectful of this tool and actually use it and see how it does. I'm not just going to let it sit around and waste away. So it's totally going to get used. most beautiful knife I've ever seen in my life. I, I actually teared up when I opened it. It's so incredible. Even the, the certificate of authenticity, it's metal. Look at this. That's very, um, that's very classy. That's really, really nice. A metal card. It came in a black nylon pouch as well with a sticker that I put on my knife box. And, um, it was like, fur lined very nice i did have someone reach out today and ask why i carry my traditional knives in pocket slips and i've you know touched on this in basically every video i've ever made but i will reiterate again for knives like this that you're putting in your pocket if you want them to not get beaten to absolute crap these are fantastic so not only does a leather pocket slip or any pocket slip for that matter, protect your knife. Whoops. Um, it protects your knife from dirt getting into the moving parts, right? We don't want dirt get getting into this pivot because that is very difficult to flush out if you have something large stuck in there. So we try to keep dirt and debris out of this area. That's why I always carry my traditional knives with the moving part down in the slip that way if any dirt were to get into here it's just going into a closed surface of the knife it would take quite a bit of effort for things to work their way down all the way down into the slip and then up into the knife from there so i that's how i carry my traditional knives i carry them like that it also protects the covers protects it from getting dinged up and for me, I'll be honest, a lot of it is just pure enjoyment. I enjoy leather work from the best leather worker in the entire world, and I enjoy traditional knives. So when I put them together and I have a setup like this that I'm carrying around, it's a nice conversation piece. It's an actual tool that I can use. It's a great backup knife. Sometimes I carry traditional knives specifically for food prep, and then my main blade is for all the dirty work. But I, I'm not kidding. I have gone to bars and breweries and pulled out my traditional knives and literally just like put them in front of strangers and been like, hey, look at this. My name's Erica and I have a knife page if you want to check it out. I'm not kidding. I, I genuinely do that. You can ask my friends. I, I literally just did it the other day. I was at um, Chrysanthes in Brookline, New Hampshire. <laughs> and I met this guy, Ryan, and I just whipped out my knives and I was like, hey, do you like knives? You look like a tradesman. These are pretty cool if you want to look at them. And uh, we ended up talking for the rest of the night over beers so there are plenty of reasons to carry a traditional knife it's all personal preference there are many reasons or reasons not to carry them in a leather slip you don't have to that's just what i suggest but 
this was a very, uh, very heartwarming gift for my birthday. Like I said, it's not until the 27th, but, um, if, if you guys have been around on the channel for a while, you would know that my birthdays, you know, I'm still recovering from those. Um, I'm not going to get into too much detail here, but birthdays haven't been the easiest for me, uh, in terms of mental health. There were five of them, not in a row, but over a span of several years where I, um, intended to do some, some self-harm with alcohol and drugs on my birthday just because they were really difficult for me to deal with and um, some some pretty serious incidents that came up on my birthday involving drugs and alcohol on purpose, if you get what I'm saying. Um, they've always been a struggle for me. I'm slowly recovering from that, but... Um, yeah, it, birthdays were really hard for me for quite some time until I made my YouTube channel and entered the knife community and started meeting all of these absolutely beautiful souls that I have interacted with on here. And the warm welcome and the love that I have experienced in this community is just not found anywhere else. My best friends in my entire life are here in the YouTube knife community and the Instagram. I have made some friends that I will never leave. And just sharing the passion with you guys, sharing experiences, just enjoying it together, it's been an absolute blessing and some of the best times I've ever had have been with you guys. Some of the best conversations have been with you guys. So I just want to thank you all so much. Thank you, Jesse, again for this absolutely beautiful piece. It will never leave. This is my favorite knife, like hands down. Um, this, I feel like this was made for me, man. This is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Riding in a slip from one of my best friends in the whole world. But it was a really, it was a really nice gift. And I just want to say thank you again, guys, because I, I don't know what I did to deserve this type of kindness. I don't know what I did to manifest all of you beautiful souls, but I am so grateful for you guys. So that's a look at my Mike Morin regular straight jack and CPM 154, the most beautiful knife I've ever seen in my life. I'm actually gonna go use my shit, maybe sharpen some knives tonight. And I will surely see you on the next video. I love you guys so much. Take care, fam.